joining us to discuss the protective orders and the ways you can protect yourself against price gouging is San Diego Sheriff Bill Gore. Mr. Gore, thank you very much for uh, taking time for us today. I know it's one thing to tell a restaurant, hey, you got to close your doors and no one's going to come by for a couple weeks. You don't have that luxury in your line of work, do you? <laughs> Sometimes I'd like to be able to close the door, but, but that, as you know, that's not the way yeah. it works. Uh, especially with the Sheriff's Department, we have so many operational areas, whether it's courts, our law enforcement responsibilities, or running seven detention facilities in San Diego County. So we're, we're constantly uh, adjusting uh, to meet the, the public health crisis that we find ourselves in now. Uh, I couldn't be prouder of the men and women of, of the Sheriff's Department, how adapt, uh, adaptable they've been. Uh, We've had some breaks, actually, with the courts closing. That helped us free up a lot of resources from our uh, court screening personnel, weapon screening, uh, bailiffs, to redeploy them into some of our law, law enforcement operations. We're facing the same issues that every business is with some of our employees that have kids that are home and daycare situations. Uh, employees, for, fortunately, we've had no employees uh, report any COVID-19 uh, uh, symptoms, So, but, but we still have people on normal sick leave. So we're adjusting. Uh, probably the, one of the biggest challenge we have is in our jails. Uh, we take that responsibility to keep our inmates safe uh, very seriously. So starting a couple of weeks ago, we started screening everybody that came into our facilities, uh, trying to... to uh, what does that screening entail? Well, it entails uh, extensive questioning. Back uh, two or three weeks ago, it dealt with travel, foreign travel, or uh, association with people that have just participated in some foreign travel, looking for any symptomatic, uh, any respiratory is uh, issues. If, uh, we, if they had both the travel and the symptoms of a possible uh, uh, respiratory uh, illness, uh, they were diverted to a hospital. Fortunately, we didn't have to divert anybody. Uh, and if they just were symptomatic, we put them in an isolation <clears throat> and did a uh, started a routine of a twice daily temperature taking to to ensure that they didn't have the COVID-19. And to date, we have not had any uh, uh, positive uh, 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 tests in our in our facility. But it's still important. We, we try to what we're trying to do by screening people coming in is to avoid that. Plus, we're looking at uh, changing our field operations and, and arresting fewer people. Uh, we've changed our booking criteria to where uh, low-level offenders uh, that might have been booked before into our into our facilities, now they're getting cited and released. Uh, <clears throat> the, the purpose there is to, to lower our population uh, so that we can create more space in our facilities to do this social distancing that everybody's talking about. And also, uh, we're looking at uh, the at-risk population in our facilities, the people of a certain age limit, over 60, that might have pre-existing health conditions, and looking at <clears throat> can we safely release them into the community. Uh, we're always looking at that. So that. The key is there, safely release them. We're not going to be taking somebody that's in our custody charged with murder and releasing the community. Right. What we're looking at, it's a, it's a balancing act, trying to lower our population so that we can spread people out. And should we have an outbreak, which is not, I don't think, too uh, unrealistic to, <laughs> to imagine. Because you see the national <laughs> reports, and you, you're you trying to minimize contact. I get that. You mm -hmm. want to, But a lot of people, there will be people in society that will see this as a get out of jail Absolutely. free card and uh, do you have a message for those people that yeah, are going to try to that, get away with that that is not uh, what we're doing what we're trying to do is keep the population that we have in a, in a controlled environment uh, closed environment as safe as we possibly can we take that obligation very seriously and if we can have somebody out of that confined environment and not be a risk to public safety we're going to try to get that person out I've already implemented <clears throat> looking at people in the last 30 days of their sentence. I have the authority to release them early. So we're looking at that. We're trying to free up uh, a couple of hundred beds in one facility so that we can, should we have an outbreak, isolate all the, the infected inmates in that one facility to keep the spread of that disease. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. But again, the number one goal is public safety. Uh, I don't think the community has to worry about uh, we're opening the door to put out violent offenders or sex offenders. That is not the case. We're looking at low-level misdemeanors uh, that pose no risk to, this, uh, to our community. My grandparents used to tell me stories about back in, in World War II times or you know, the stories that were handed down to us kids about how back then if you tried to profiteer on your neighbor 
consequences were beyond severe. <laughs> Does that same thing apply to the people who are selling $20 uh, carton toilet Absolutely. paper out of, the, out of their garage right now? Uh, we, we would hope that a crisis like we're all in nationwide around the world would bring out the best in people. But we know human nature sometimes it brings out the worst in people. Uh, the case we had up in Fallbrook, uh, I think, uh, shows you we're not going to we're not going to tolerate that. Uh, we're if, if we're actively pursuing those kind of cases. If we're going online, we're looking around for that type of price gouging, and uh, and we're aggressively going on with with the with DA Summer Steph, and you saw that uh, you saw that report earlier. I think it's important for people to know that it's just not the sheriff's department that's responsible for enforcing uh, this public health order. All of the local law enforcement agencies in the county of San Diego uh, have responsibility for <clears throat> for also uh, implementing and, and enforcing this order. So we're all looking at this very seriously. We're talking regularly with our law enforcement partners in San Diego, as we do on all our all our enforcement operations. Is this going to change how you do business going forward? Absolutely. Well, as far as you go to our website, uh, sdsheriff.net, and you'll see how we're we're changing on a daily basis with new updates. What we're trying to do is if it's if. We're, Crimes can be reported telephonically. We're encouraging people to do that so that there's not uh, contact and coming into our facilities. We're already having a lot of uh, teleworking, people staying at home and working from home. Uh, our own uh, briefings in our offices, we're spreading those out and doing those telephonically or to, through conference where we can have virtual meetings, and we're trying to do that. It affects the way we do business, and we're trying to, to do it so we can keep providing those public safety services to our community while keeping our employees safe. Uh, so we're looking at it from all different angles. Our employees safe, keeping the community safe, keeping the inmates in our custody safe. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts here, <clears throat> and we're trying to uh, trying to adjust as best we can to all those. Sheriff Gore, I do not envy the assignment before you. I know it's uh, daunting, yeah. but I can't think of a better person suited for handling it all. I think everybody just has to stay calm, uh, use good common sense, uh, take care of yourself, take care of your family, limit your contact, all the stuff that's been out there. And if we do that, we can get through this, I think, and come out the other end hopefully stronger than we were when we went in. I think that's the note we leave it on, okay? Sheriff Thanks, Gore, everybody.